for 40 minutes crying like a baby. Bikers, joggers, tourists, runners, they went by me. Police officers searching for suicidal people went by me twice. I'm standing at the ledge, leaning over the rail with tears flowing down to the waters. And I thought to myself, absolutely nobody cares. And then the voice in my head said, jump now, and I did. And the millisecond that my hands cleared the rail and my legs flew over it, it was an instant regret. The depression was wiped from my mind, and all I wanted to do was live, and I thought, it's too late. Kevin Hines was 19 when he jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. He is one of the many incredible people that I've been grateful to meet over the past three weeks as I aim to further understand the complexity surrounding suicide. And I know I've made mistakes. I know I've let people down. But what happens when you're given an opportunity to help make a difference in the world? The backlash against the social media star. A very popular guy called Logan Paul is in some hot water. I think he's water. a complete and utter insensitive idiot. He's taking a break from daily vlogging. Even he says his latest content was his biggest mistake. I want to apologize to the victim and his family. It's time to learn from the past as they get better and grow as a human being. I'm here to have a hard conversation so that those who are suffering can have easier ones. So I've never been so humbled in my life by a single event. Were you kind of shocked by it? I was shocked to discover just how big this is. You've know. never known anybody that killed themselves? No one. No one. And that was, that was, that was part of the problem, is just my ignorance on the subject. But in Ohio, where you come from, it's the second leading cause of death. And I know while I'm not able to solve the problem by myself, I want to be a part of the solution. And that solution began across the country in New York City. We sat down with Dr. John Draper, director of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. We have to change the conversation publicly from just focusing on suicide and how something bad is happening and say, well, what, what do we do about it? Help people understand that the first thing they need to do is reach out and talk to somebody when they're feeling in despair. Because you're not alone with it anymore. They, they, they've done studies with people who are, who are experiencing any kind of pain, including hanging off a cliff. You can hold on a lot longer if somebody is right there with you. I think as a society, as human beings, uh, we just have to be more compassionate. And that includes me too. That's something I'm learning along this journey. And something else that Dr. Draper told me were the five steps that anyone can take to help prevent suicide. Step one is simply just ask. Ask yourself, ask others, are you thinking about suicide? And I know that sounds like a daunting question, but literally that question can save lives. And step two, accordingly, would be just to listen. Be present, don't make any judgments, and then step three would be be there for them, even after you've already asked, because dependability is key. Step four is then help them connect, uh, whether it's with a friend, a family member, a local suicide hotline therapist, but help them reach out to someone so they don't have to deal with this alone. Lastly, step five is just check in on them, show them that you care, uh, call them up, say, hey, I wanna make sure you're okay, can I check in with you over the next few days? So one of the things that is so important about reducing stigma is getting stories out there about people positively coping with suicide. Do you guys know anyone I could talk to with the lived experience of suicide? Ab absolutely. We have quite a number of people that, that we could, we could oh, refer over to. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. And that's how we got introduced to Kevin Hines. 17 years ago, Kevin jumped off of the Golden Gate Bridge and survived. These are individuals whose stories, when people hear them, they say, you know, maybe I can get through. As opposed to hearing stories when people have it. And, and those are, unfortunately, those are the stories that we've heard before. Now we're hearing more and more stories of people being more open about it. As I was saying before, Logan, for every one person that dies by suicide, there's 287 other people that think seriously about it but don't. Those are stories, again, that have not been told. If we told those stories of people who got through it as opposed to one who didn't, imagine what kind of influence that would have on people's behavior. When I found out that one in six high school kids seriously think about suicide, that's, that's stunning. Yeah. This is such a common problem. Logan, all I wanted was for one person to look me in my eyes and say, hey, kid, are you okay? I am so grateful to be alive, and I'm grateful today for every millisecond I get to breathe, because it was almost all ripped from me by me. What's one thing you would have said to your younger self? 
to the Kevin who was 19, sitting on the bus, if you were next to you, and instead of the guy who pointed and laughed, what would you say? I would just put my hand on the sh <laughs> I would just put my hand on my shoulder, and I would just say, I'm here for you. I got you. We need to be a society that comes together for every person in the community that's going through hell. And in order to do that, every person that's going through hell, whatever hell, has to be honest about their pain. And if they're gonna be honest about their pain, we are going to collectively answer the call and be there for that individual. Because if you don't see beauty in the next person you meet, you're not looking hard enough. You're incredible, dude. This is an honor for me. It's an honor for me too, brother. From this point on, I want to make an effort to contribute and immerse myself in the conversation. So I'm pledging to donate $1 million to various suicide prevention organizations with the first $250,000 going immediately to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline so they can increase their capacity to help those in need. For anyone watching, I want you to know you are not alone. And most of the time, crisis passes. So if you or anyone you know feels alone or trapped, I encourage anyone to call or even text the suicide or crisis hotline. Both of those numbers are below, and although this is a tough conversation, it's important because things can and will get better. It's time to start a new chapter in my life as I continue to educate both myself and others on suicide. I'm humbled and thankful to say, this is just the beginning.